Welcome to Bond Park. 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 I'm Sarah Geidlinger. This is week four of Marshall Ward not joining me for the podcast due to social distancing. I hope you're all staying home and staying safe. And for those of you who are out there working to keep us fed and alive, thank you, truly. We actually got to see Marshall the other day. I know, I know, we weren't breaking any rules. My husband Steve and I were out for a walk getting our daily PE, and when we walked by Marshall's house, he happened to be out on his front porch. We were out in the roadway, keeping our distance. It was so nice to catch up with him for a few minutes, to check in and have a few laughs. Our families really miss Marshall's weekly visits for recordings. So we've got some good Bond Park news. We just placed third in the Dorothy Shoemaker podcast competition hosted by Kitchener Public Library. We are very proud of this accomplishment as we submitted our first episode ever. Check out kpl.com to listen to the winning episodes. It's worth it. We were in good company. Okay, now on to our guest. This week we have artist Trisha Abe. She's a local contour painter, illustrator, and muralist whose work celebrates the human form through bold, strong lines with themes of sisterhood and feminine energy. We actually recorded this episode back in November of last year, and Trisha described a period of self-isolation, which means something totally different right now in this pandemic. What she was actually referring to was a period of time in her life when she worked solely on her art and self-isolated until she emerged with a form, style, and process. She has so much to share, so let's get to it. Here's Trisha Abe. So Trish, thank you so much for joining us on Bond Park. Thanks for having me. We're um, we're very impressed that you are uh, willing to come and talk to two strangers across <laughs> town. <laughs> Maybe I should be more fearful, but no, I'm too trusting. KW is a very welcoming yeah. community. It is. Yes. It really <laughs> is. Um, I was mentioning when you first got here that the first time I saw your work was on King Street, downtown Kitchener, across from City Hall-ish. Mm-hmm. I saw one of your mural pieces that is on the... Um, Siding during construction is that sort of what or what was that um was the, the piece across from city hall mm-hmm. um so that's been an empty lot for a few years mm-hmm. now a, i heard that a building burned down there and they haven't built anything there since um so the city commissioned me for that piece and they said the people who are working at city hall were just like i'm tired of looking at this empty lot um so they just put up some hoarding and yeah. paid hoarding. me to Don't hoarding yeah looking for <laughs> <laughs> and paid me to paint it yeah. um there aren't any plans to build anything on that space, I don't think. Um, someone owns the land, but I think they're just sitting on it and waiting for the value to skyrocket as KW just continues yeah, to, you know. It does. Yeah. <laughs> day after day. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I was telling you, my husband and I were doing the, um, it was our anniversary and we made a last minute plan to do the downtown Kitchener staycation and did the cheap Walper night, went out for dinner. And the next morning we were walking around looking for coffee and saw your piece and he's talking away and he doesn't really notice these things as much as I do. And I was just like, stop, stop. We have to take a picture of this. What is this? This is beautiful. Who is this? And it's, you have it taped with your name, which mm-hmm. is great. And I think your Instagram handle. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't seen anything like that in town. Right. And uh, I, th- I think uh, Marshall has a word for this type of drawing. Yeah, I describe it as like a really strong, bold contour mm-hmm. lines. Yeah, and, um, that's what it was. It's um, so uh, powerful with a just simple black line, you mm-hmm. know. Right. Um, sometimes on a very minimal too, on top of um, sometimes like a, just a, a simple color field, um, or uh, sometimes you have it on top of uh, like geome- more geometric type mm-hmm. colorful. Yeah. Abstract stuff going on. But contour is the actual, like, contour or blind contour is what they call it oh, in, yeah, like... yeah, use that too, yeah. In blind art contour. school. Yeah, and the so, idea... yeah, it reminds me of when you're a child and you're asked to try and draw a plant yeah. or something with your eyes closed, right? Exactly. Yeah. Or by looking at the subject and not looking at the paper you're and drawing on. And not lifting on. your tool. Not right? lifting your tool. Mm-hmm. So it's the idea is it's all a continuous line. Um, I always t- kind of talk about the style that I do as kind of a neater version oh, of that because totally. sure. yeah. i i absolutely hated doing blind contour whenever You're kidding. i i did really? i because oh, it was because wow. it was always so messy and i would always want to look at the paper um and i would always finish and 
look at these portraits where the ear was in the wrong spot and the eye was in the wrong spot. And I was like, I, if I looked at the paper, I could have just, you know, done a neater version Gotten of this. It, right. Yeah. That's, yeah, the be- yeah. that's the beauty of it, though. You can't screw up a blind contour. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a beauty. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely not what's happening in your work. Your work is tight and it is beautiful mm-hmm. and the shapes are very easily recognizable, these forms of faces. And I love when we get into sort of like the shoulders and the neck right. area. How did you get started doing this as your job? Um, so I haven't been doing it for very long. Um, that's surprising cause it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It, it's been, it's funny because it's been like a very intense, fast, like dive into it. Um, but I started painting December, 2017. Wow. So it's coming up to my two years of painting and then almost my one year anniversary of murals. Mm-hmm. Um, so hasn't been very long, but it's just been very intense. Um, I came to, so I grew up in Mississauga and I came to, uh, Waterloo for school. I did five years at UW for health science and I graduated with a science degree. Good for you. (laughs) That's awesome. So I have, I have a science degree that I'm not using at all. Um, but it was before my last semester of that degree where I started painting because I realized that I had spent five years working up to a career in health research. And I, when I was actually doing research, I realized I hated it. Um, so painting was just like a very therapeutic thing at the time. Didn't have any intentions on like of turning it into a business or anything. Um, it was very much just like, I'm going to do this cause I want to pick up a paintbrush again. And I want to like kind of channel this create like creativity that I had neglected for five years. Cause I barely touched my art supplies. You never I was, walked into East campus hall on Phillips street. You I never, did. I art, did fine arts building? one, um, fine arts course in my first oh, year. You did? Okay. Yeah. It was my, it was <laughs> so, my elective. So, so you knew it was there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I did one fine arts course. That's where I did like contour drawing right. and blind contour drawing. Yeah. But, um, after that it was just science and I didn't have much time or didn't see a place for art in yeah. that degree. Um, so it was like right in the end where I had some more time and it was like, I always called December of 2017, my like special, like kind of artist month. It's cause I was like pretty much locked myself in my apartment and I was only creating like a new piece every day, not necessarily a painting, but like drawing, sketch, whatever. And then by the end of the Christmas holidays, I found I had this collection of work. And oh, I, what did that stuff look like? Not to, sorry to talk over you, but yeah, no did it look like your current work? Or were um, you just like letting out whatever it was that was locked up? I was head? letting out a lot of stuff. So it's funny because like, um, I don't think I have any of those pieces left. But I, I remember coming out with six pieces. There were some common themes now that I like looking back. Um, portrait work is always something that I've been interested in. So like people were... Yeah consistently in my work um but it was more of like a colorful kind of pop art style um and there was like a little bit of like play with line work just a very small amount um but the style definitely evolved into line portraits like i there you can see like if you were to lay out my work you can kind of see the progression of it but in the beginning it was very much just like i'm going to throw a ton of colors on this canvas Um, and just like, kind of, it was like an emotional outlet at that point. Yeah. (laughs) What I find so engaging about it is, um, you provide just enough information for the viewer who then feels compelled to fill in the blanks, Yeah, but just enough that we can fully read it. You can see the gestures, you can see Mm -hmm. the, the, all the body language, you know, everything in your paintings, uh, means something to me, like, uh, the way a wrist falls Mm -hmm. or a hand or the way a head is turned. It's all, um, it's, it's as though you, you know, exactly what, um, to give yeah. and not go any further with it. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you. That's, yeah. that's such a compliment. <laughs> it, it really is. And it's funny because you, you touched on something that I didn't know I was feeling about the work, which is, but when you said it, I really related to it, which is, um, it's so calming. Mm. The, the tone of the emotion that's happening mm-hmm. in these pieces with the, with people and their profiles and just the body language again, is how you, how you put it, Marshall. Um, it's so calming and grounding to mm-hmm. me because there's a lot going on that's um, just very obvious right away. Mm-hmm. To me, it's um, these people, these figures are comfortable. They know why they're in the place that they're in. They know what they're there to tell you. Yeah. They know that maybe it, it might not even have anything to do with you, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? But you're part of it. And it's it's a very confident, calming, serene feeling that I get from those pieces. That's I love that you described it that way because okay. I... <laughs> I always, um, there were a few things when I was 
creating for the heck of creating yeah. that I noticed after I'd lay out my work, I'd find some common themes among them. And one of the things was that I was using very bright colors when I originally started, even though this was kind of a confusing, sad time of my life. Everything was very colorful. So it was like, I was using art to kind of almost as therapy. It's to therapeutic. Yeah, yeah but totally. to like kind of like communicate how I was feeling because I couldn't Without figure it out. Knowing. Yeah. 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 Um, another thing that came out when I was doing portrait work was that everyone had like a straight face. Mm -hmm. I would never do any, like have any expression on any of these people's faces. And I was like trying to figure out why I was like, are they just like, you know, I, don't, I, I couldn't figure it out, but I like continue to try to translate it a little yeah. bit, but it just, everything you've touched upon, like it was a lot of being content, like yeah. confidence, strength. And there is something about like a resting face that I think is really beautiful in a way. And it's it's all of those things without being static. You still mm -hmm. get that feeling that if if you're about to glance away, these figures are going to move and get back about the business, <laughs> which could be laughing, talking, going to work, doing whatever it is that they're doing. Right, right, mm -hmm. right yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very and, nice And yet, yet you're able to also capture something like I saw one of like a woman screaming. Yes. A girl screaming. And uh, so that was really evocative too. That you was know, one of so my few pieces that I've ever expressed. Because I would of say the emotion. expression most of your figures is almost pensive, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. or stoic kind of yeah. Yeah, feeling. Yeah, that piece that you're talking about, um, I did for a friend's kind of like it was his like art exhibit. Um, I would I started off doing a lot of like underground art shows. Um, so we would rent out spaces like. Um, old like garage storage facilities and like put art where it wasn't supposed to be right. um but this event he wanted something to go with the theme of like uh it was called like digital glue it was like our relationship with technology mm -hmm. and that piece that you're talking about was i think the i used that um very angry woman kind of portrait on two different pieces one of them was like um there were like instagram like hearts behind it mm -hmm. um so that was a pretty big piece but i remember that was very much venturing out of my comfort zone because I was like, I want everyone to have a straight face. Mm -hmm. But it was really fun to do anger as well because you could really get into the lines with the eyebrows and like... And yet, and yet the lines didn't tighten up. It's amazing that mm -hmm. you kept that fluid. There's no question. It's your work. Thanks. <laughs> That's, um, that means um, a lot, yeah. The, um, I was thinking about your work and how uh, scale would have been something... Um, you would have like you would have started small, I guess, as you started working on this body of work, yeah. and you got bigger and bigger. Yeah. And uh, how did that play into uh, your compositions and how you built large scale pieces? Like, how did you? It, it did it just feel natural just to get bigger and bigger? Um, or was that part of the mural painting? Like, how? Yeah. How did that progress? It. I started off on canvas. Yeah. Um. So I was doing canvas for a few months, and then. My, I found my canvas is getting bigger. That's now that I think about it. So I was living in a very tiny apartment and my canvases were getting too big for that apartment at one point. And I was like... crazy canvas lady in your apartment? Yeah. yeah. And I was like storing canvases in my bathtub and wow. stuff. Yeah. Okay. It was very... <laughs> I, always, I love this. Yeah. I always... I talk about like... People are like, hey, your apartment was probably not that small. I was like, no, it was 250 square feet. Yeah, that's small. It was a shoebox. It was like a studio apartment. And... That's yeah, small. It was very yeah. small. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so my canvases were getting bigger and bigger. And then, um, I had to start painting some of them. I would spray paint some of them sometimes when I was still experimenting with mm -hmm. different mediums and stuff. Um, and my landlord at my old apartment saw me spray painting outside on a canvas and was like, Hey, would you want to do a piece on this old beat up shed in our parking lot or the, of our apartment building? And like from a mural perspective, it was like a tiny mural, but from a canvas perspective, it was huge. Mm -hmm. Right. So I wanted to see if the canvas work and the line work could translate to a bigger size. Um, and it worked really well. That was my first piece. And it's still like, it's still on at like Frederick and East Ave, like in downtown Kitchener um, on this like really old shed. Um, so but, are, are you sketching and then using an old pig projector to mm -hmm. blow it up? Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. that's such a good question. Yeah. I was wondering about that process. Yeah. yeah because there's a point where I think it gets so big that you would lose some control. It's almost like you're, your eyes can't take in that space. Right. Because um, it's easy when you're doing it on a piece of paper because you can see the entire page. Yeah, you can't see the totality of it. Right. Yeah. And with, with portrait work, it's difficult because if any of your proportions are off, it might not look like a person anymore. And like with, with people, it's very important to get those mm -hmm. proportions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's brushwork. Yeah. Yeah. I paint 
all my lines and I, I go very slowly so that I the murals kind of look like they've been printed onto the oh they do yeah, yeah. I try not to show too many brush strokes if I do it would be like kind of at the edges to kind of show like yeah this has been painted on um, this, it's very clean work it's absolutely thank you there's, there's nothing yeah. painterly about the <laughs> no yeah so um okay so 2017 you're painting you're drawing you're figuring out your life right <laughs> you know precisely I feel like I'm yes doing. <laughs> um and then your bathtub is full of canvases and where mm-hmm. do you go from there um I start posting to Instagram okay that was uh pretty much again I was like I graduated university I was still painting and I took on like a part-time serving bartending job mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted that job so I could have time and like the mental capacity to keep painting yeah. and continuing to do that. Yeah. Um, and I did that for a few months and I was posting everything to Instagram, um, just for myself. Like I wanted to see the growth of the work. And it's a wonderful place to get feedback from people too. Mm. Right? Yeah. At that point I was like, I remember losing a bunch of followers because it was oh, like, it happened to me all the time. Yeah. Once I get creative. I lose all right. kinds of people, but it was all yeah. people like it must've been so confusing to see because, um, I hadn't really used Instagram that much and it was all pictures of like my dog or coffee shops mm-hmm. or so- stuff like that. Right. And then I started consistently posting, posting artwork and, um, people from like, I knew from high school were just like, nah, I'm not about this, mm-hmm. but I was getting new followers, yeah. um, and interest in my work. And, I started getting messages about like, how much is this piece? And like, once I started doing the line work, people were coming to me for commission work and they were like, can you paint my family? Can you paint like my friends? So it turned into like the line work, something it's, it's very, it's a very flexible style. And a lot of people can relate to it because it's abstract kind of versions of people. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also like, it's different from doing like a realistic portrait of someone. It's kind of a more, I don't know. I think of it kind of like um, it's it's a hobby. It, I'm not using the word hobby with regards to the artwork. I'm using the word hobby in this way that um, as you're out and about and talking to people and go to the grocery store and go mm-hmm. through it front, you're looking at people, the form of people's faces mm-hmm. all the time and lines. I like do that as a photographer. Yeah, I just, stare at people and I'm, I'm sure they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's <laughs> almost like you're drawing a line around them while you're looking. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. Yeah. Sesame yeah. Street used to do this kind of thing. Where it's like, yeah. Out, <laughs> I forgot and about then, that. Then the person would walk away and you'd be left with the, yeah, outline, the of, outline of, of Bert or something, <laughs> right? And I imagine your brain chemistry almost changes in that way when you mm. do that much um, line work that's figurative. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I could a lot of people were coming to me for these portraits because it was like, it didn't necessarily look exactly like the person they wanted it to be, but you can still capture a lot of characteristics and expression that could be like, Oh, is this me? Like it's, Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of great gift ideas. Right. People are always looking for one of a kind gifts. Right. right? Do you see yourself in the work? Um, in like my per in my personal, um, I'm talking about maybe, um, the way, uh, everybody kind of carries himself or the way or, or our mood can be you know mm. um, I've often heard it said that portraiture is often a bit of a mm-hmm. you know, an artist you can see a bit of the artist is in there I um in the yeah there I've had people ask like like a lot of with a lot of my female portrait work um people asking like I okay I didn't know if it was like an art kind of translating to life like which came first kind of mm-hmm. thing but I remember I started wearing my hair in a low bun just like oh, a lot of my right. portrait work yeah. so people were asking me like are you just painting yourself and I'm like I didn't think so but maybe I don't know I'm becoming my work yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what came first but and are you happy with the, the male female what you see in your work like you're trying to convey a female and that's that reads as a female mm-hmm. every time is there mm-hmm. ever a bit of a blur there between them and you can't quite sometimes you work at it and mm-hmm. figure out how to yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes and shouldn't there be? There should be. A yeah. Blur. yeah. Right. You're, For sure. You know. um, the, I recently saw a set of tattoos on sisters, I think, yeah. on your Instagram. Yeah. So I think they had got, was it twins or just? They were twins. Yeah. yeah. They had gotten each other. Yeah. As a, in your work as a tattoo on their, on yeah. the inside of their forearm. Yeah. Uh, an absolutely beautiful Thanks. work. And it wasn't tiny. It was a it's Maybe pretty the size of a palm yeah. of your hand or mm-hmm. a hand. Um, and have you had a lot of that, of those requests or was that a first time? Yeah, I've done a lot of, um, I actually did like a collaboration with a pretty big tattoo shop in Toronto mm-hmm. where they commissioned me to do like a flash sheet of oh, cool. eight designs. Yeah. Um, and then they put it out onto their social media and it was like first come first serve with these designs. Um, and these were all like, I had like complete creative freedom. It wasn't like I was drawing specific people or ideas. Um, so there are 
like eight to nine people like I don't even know with tattoos oh, of my how work is that? um it's crazy you're gonna be out there in the world one day and be like that's my, my but it's yours but it's mine yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um but tattoos it is a pretty um uh like desirable style of tattooing now I find like as of like recently too just because it's so minimal mm-hmm. um and there's a lot more contemporary tattooing happening um, where it's not as like traditional bold lines, bold yeah. colors. It's a lot of this more like dainty kind of work. So I, I get a lot of tattoo requests and I try to, I'm trying to kind of like limit them now because I want to specialize in like female portrait work only, especially for tattoos. So, um, I'm yeah. fortunate to be able to like pick and choose what my commissions at this point, which is really, I never thought about yeah. That. yeah I went, like this would lend itself so much better to tattoo art than like high realism. You know, you see mm-hmm. somebody who gets a, portrait of somebody somebody's face or a Mm -hmm. cat it's like almost super high realism right tattoo work right and i think that for longevity yeah oh definitely for longevity like just from a like a blowout kind of perspective oh totally yeah Yeah. can you talk about the relationship between your uh line portraiture work uh when it comes to being on top of uh color Mm -hmm. and and shape in that Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. how um and how those two work together for you? Um, do you really think that through? Um, how you want the figures to, or do you just kind of go for it? Um, I haven't done a whole lot with color, um, and I'm trying to move towards doing more with color. Um, in terms of choosing, I, I always, I don't have any sort of education in art so (laughs) when people talked about me like talk to me about like composition and like color palettes and stuff like that it like I really don't know what I'm doing in terms of I'm gonna be honest it's okay um Mm -hmm. like even the idea of like whenever I talk to graphic designers or just talk about graphic design in general I'm just like very intimidated by it because I'm like you guys probably know so much about like talking Pantone and yeah (laughs) and I'm like no education in this like I'm just like basically playing it by ear Mm -hmm. um with the colors I've chosen it's it's a lot I don't know if there's a lot of thought that goes into it yeah it's just very intuitive I guess yeah kind of have some sense of how you want to I try to do um like if I'm if I'm doing a bigger piece, I'll definitely do like a sketch, like a digital sketch first. So I had to like I did at one point teach myself how to like draw on a tablet, draw on Illustrator and stuff like that. So you're doing sorry, I'm, I love software. And yeah, we were just talking a couple of weeks ago to Steph, Stephanie Butari. Oh, okay, cool. Who was actually an architect turned muralist? Yes. So there's it's a, bunch it's of a you very out there. it's a very bunch common professionals out there. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and she was saying she does the iPad Pro. Yeah, and then through Illustrator, is your process similar? Um, so I'm like a big Illustrator fan, like fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I I, Illustrator. I bought an iPad and a pencil, and I've been trying to get the hang of Procreate, mm-hmm. and I'm having My the hardest like time. Procreate right now. I I feel so dumb because like i'm it's, going it's a process it takes time especially because i've fine-tuned this whole like illustrator mm-hmm. thing where i like essentially train myself to draw on a pad that's connected to my computer and i'm not oh, actually yeah. i do that too yeah well, and these guys yeah, yeah exactly um which is a skin a skill of its own because it's like so you're different than procreate on yeah on screen yeah it's because procreate is very similar to paper it's as close as paper to pencil you know, you have to, yeah, and again, I could see why you're struggling because, mm-hmm. um, and Marshall, you can probably chime in on this too because Marshall's um, taught realistic drawing mm-hmm. at Laurier, mm-hmm. and um, that relationship between the different uh, sort of hardnesses of pencil mm-hmm. on paper, you get to know that pretty quickly. Yeah, procreates the same. Yeah, but you don't really have um, that base knowledge from like being a child writing with a pencil. You know, kind of what the weight feels like. You really have to relearn all that yeah. stuff. It's like starting from scratch. I have a hard time with that. Where <laughs> Illustrator is more like the old-fashioned Corel Draw or AutoCAD. I'm yeah. AutoCAD all the time, where the lines are very. Um, there's a lot of rules. Right. It's not really free form. Right. There's a lot of rules to like those vertices and how they work together within Illustrator, right? Yeah. Yeah. But and if you found a flow with it, that works for you. It's right? it's funny because like I I bought when I was first learning Illustrator, I bought like a cheap like thirty dollar drawing pad from mm-hmm. Amazon. I think it was thirty dollars, and I still use that to this day, even though I have like this fancy yeah. iPad and a pencil. Um, but it's just like what I've become so used to. You know that Procreate and iPad and pencil, even though it's fancy, that could become almost like maybe not your fine tuning for your process, but it could become like a sketchbook that's in your bag. Right. 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 The thing, what I really liked about it was the portability of it for sure. Because if not, I'm just 
like always stuck at my like my home mm-hmm. in front of my computer so I did really like the idea that you could draw anywhere and save it and not waste paper and you know yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like this idea of you not feeling uh, that you have to use color you know yeah I, th- I think how um there's so many powerful works of art um whether it's a Picasso mural or whatnot but um they're black and white and they just simply don't need to go there Mm -hmm. Um, or the movie Schindler's List Mm -hmm. is like 99.9% black and white with one little bit of red used right when it means something Mm -hmm. and uh, I like that idea Mm -hmm. that of um, your your lines and your work is so strong that just there's no need to introduce color Mm -hmm. unless there is a, a something that comes along where you feel like this would something strengthen that, the piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes that um, almost inevitable or um, if that inspiration comes along or if it's an installment that, if, like on a large mural scale or mm-hmm. something, where, where it's such a large scale that maybe color is right. something that you explore when it gets to e- that Even point. the black, is it black right out of the tube? Like, is, or is it a... I haven't or seen any mixing, of your work yeah. per person, so... Is it a warm black that where you've mixed something in? Like I have in red, or you just take using black? Out I'm of the just tube? just black. Yeah. Uh, I use like Benjamin Moore, like wall paint. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I was wondering. Yeah. yeah, and how so? Your the cleanliness of those lines is probably helped by that type of paint. It's very thick. Yeah, 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 for sure. Interesting. Um, I wanted to. Well, first of all, I was thinking about something when Marshall was talking about color, and I was thinking about murals and installations and all that. Um, Marshall and I have talked many times about the beautification of the city and how, you know, the city mm-hmm. commissioned you to do that first piece in yeah. downtown Kitchener um, and how mural art has become such an amazing um, part of cities. It's almost like an attraction. So city councils actually sit and talk and mm-hmm. speak about their sign variances and all that different kind of stuff to make sure they can get this stuff into their towns. And they create one of a kind gathering spaces too. They create, and that's the thing. They create one of a kind mm-hmm. gathering spaces. And not only that, I'm just like, I almost feel like falling at the feet of muralists right now. Our city has been so gray and brown and brown and gray and gray and brown. <laughs> Sometimes there's some beige and then there's more gray and some brown. Um, Even our public art for decades was all yeah, kind of gray and, and brown gray. Yeah. and beige. <laughs> yeah. And to see something beautiful, it's almost, it's just jaw dropping. Um, I'm so grateful to have your art and the, the, the art of other muralists mm-hmm. In, I'm not sure if you define yourself as a muralist or that you're an artist that does also <laughs> your own work. It's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I yeah. always say artist slash muralist. Yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And that's fine and great. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, I do want to thank you for adding that to our city. Um, mm-hmm. What I was really anxious to talk to you about too, though, was your installation in Shopify, Shopify in Uptown Waterloo. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? What am I looking at when I look at that? <laughs> I kind of want to walk in there, but I'm also socially awkward, so I right. feel like they'd ask me to leave when I came in the doors. Like, please explain this installation. You're you're talking about the the one that lights up, right? Yeah, that one. How that, did it come about? How was it created? Yeah, I I I, I always, like I put on the caption of that Instagram post like this is what happens when you're yeah. an artist in a tech city. Yeah, yeah, because it's things like this that I just get so excited about. Um, they I worked with someone at Shopify mm-hmm. to do that. Um, he's uh, his name's Brent. He's like oh sorry, that's okay. He's uh he does a lot of different kind of like art tech installations for Shopify okay or so he's his own artist he's not an employee of Shopify no or? he is an employee of Shopify oh, okay. I'm I'm not entirely sure fully what he does but <laughs> I know that he's done other sort of like light kind of in a way installations I don't think he would consider himself an artist um, I'm not sure uh, but we Shopify commissioned me for this mural and it was just like any of my other murals black line work portraits kind of looking like a crowd of portraits on a white wall. Um, And they had kind of talked to me about this idea of uh, uh, projection mapping, um, which is what it's called, what we used for that. Mm -hmm. So basically it's, um, there's a projector on the ceiling right in front of the mural. And it, it's basically projecting light only into certain shapes. So your work, your images, your people Mm -hmm. are painted on the wall. And then that projector is filling in those colorful areas. Yeah. And then projecting black light into ev- all the other spaces. Right. So, and, and he made it into an animation. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a moving work. It's, it's so mesmerizing. I've been in the, in, in Shopify so many times and I've just like, you can just stare at it for hours mm-hmm. because in real time I sped up the, the time for that video, uh, but in real time it's very slow. Oh, it's nice. a very slow animation and it's like a gradient and 
the cool thing about it is I call it like a dynamic mural because it can change. Like you can change the animation. It could be a completely different mural the next day. Um, it was, it's very, it was very cool. I just like instantly thought about like, imagine this on a bigger scale or imagine this like yeah. projected on a like, huge city, like building or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, it was, it was really cool. It's called projection mapping though. Projection mapping. Yeah. Um, what I love about the stories that you're telling about your work right now is that, so here you've, you've gone through university, you have your degree in health sciences. Mm-hmm. It sounds like after this December, 2017, um, <laughs> cathartic art experience that you isolation through, period, <laughs> isolation period. it sounds like any opportunity that's coming your way is a yes. Mm-hmm. Like, these wonderful opportunities to mural or like the installation at Shopify or the tattooing and everything. It just Mm -hmm. seems like whatever these mediums are and it's presenting itself, Mm -hmm. you're in this yes mode. Yeah. I'm going to try that. I always, yeah, I always say that everything that's happened, I kind of, it's been like an accident and I like kind of fall into like, like again, no intentions of turning this into a business mirror, becoming a muralist. Like Mm -hmm. that was, it was all by accident. Um, and I think there's there's a fair amount of luck also. Yeah. I was just like in the right place at the right time with my landlord to see me painting in the parking lot, you know, offer me this canvas. Because um, it always, I'm pretty sure Steph Butari has a very similar she story does. about yeah. how she started, right? Where she did kind of like a practice piece. Um, and it's hard to kind of get like that first shot. For Otherwise, sure. like it's hard to pitch doing a mural if you've never done any large scale work. So yeah. I, I continue to say like a lot of accidents, yeah. like conveniently placed in a, and I've just worked out somehow. <laughs> it's not like you have to hand in a resume at this point. It's like, well, have you been here? Have you seen that building? Yeah. yeah this is where my and, stuff is. And because, yeah. because of the way you work, you're able to show somebody ahead of time, the image on a small version mm-hmm. and say, this is what you're going to be getting. It's not like right. you don't know until you get there and start painting and make changes. It's, right. You, you can deliver exactly what you Sure. Yeah, I never, I always say, um, cause like commissioning a mural is a huge like commitment, right? Yeah. Um, I did a mural in someone's house recently. They just moved into their house and I did a mural on their living room wall above their couch. Amazing. And I was like, <laughs> like okay. home, home decor power move. Like yeah. that's amazing. Totally. Um, yeah. and my parents were like, we used to do a mural in our house. And I was like, maybe I should just do a canvas. Like it might be hard to you paint over. Your mind. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're going to, you know, a canvas at least you can pick up and move or take down if you wanted to. Um, I'm trying to picture priming over those dark lines. It like, would yeah. be very hard. <laughs> and there's always a bit of like texture, you know, like where yeah, you paint, be like it's ghost, raised. Ghost, ghost-like image will be showing through. Yeah, yeah. Which could be a little creepy <laughs> if it's people. <laughs> but um, so when I talk to clients, I'm always like, I'm going to, I take a picture of the wall and draw like the illustration on that wall so they know exactly what they're getting. I'm never like, it's going to be a surprise like right. on this, like, yeah. especially if it's like their that's, new office, their that's home. That's a great way to work. Yeah. It's with Sarah's photography, like, you know, and she goes, but she can't yeah. tell you what, what's going What exactly. Yeah. It's right. going to look like you. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I can do. Yeah. So I love the idea that um, you spent years um, in another area of, mm-hmm. of study. Yeah. And that, um, with, um, with no formal training. Right. You've pulled this off. There's something mm-hmm. so pure and so beautiful about that. <laughs> Thank and you. And had people along the way asking what you're doing, you know, and, yeah. but you're following, you know, your yeah. instincts. And, it was, and, uh, it was interesting. It was a surprise for a lot of people. I would, I was coming to terms with the transition from science to art. Cause I was like, yeah, I don't know. Cause like, I, like I knew my own feelings about like, science and how I wasn't really enjoying it but for a lot of people in my life it was like what is happening why is Trish suddenly this isn't you posting You're not fitting into the box that we know you exactly yeah. yeah so um did you feel something kind of tugging at you while you were in school like something just didn't like click or you if but like your fellow students somehow were on a path that was seemed more fitted to mm. them or something did you feel like an outsider like while you I felt out of place yeah. for sure um it sounded like you were just on the wheel too oh for you sure were just in go 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 mode I was really yeah. good at and I think a lot of people my age or people in school do this but they do a really good job of convincing themselves sure that they're really into yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm really into health research mm-hmm. but then when I started doing it it's like wait research is stats and writing and oh god I hate all of this you know mm-hmm. um but uh yeah, I kind of talk about how, like, you know, if I could do it after doing five years of science and, like, again, very, very suddenly switching or falling into this 
um, like a career in art. I'm constantly like, look, if you don't have your life sorted out, like maybe like plans won't necessarily, you know, pan out everything. You just got to go with it. Like I never really make plans anymore because I'm like, things could change. Mm -hmm. Like people ask me if, um, like I could see myself being an artist, you know, long term. Um, and I'm like, I'm enjoying it right now and I'm going to keep doing it until I want to switch it up maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but You're in such a great place. I think living in Waterloo region right now is mm. like being in a fantastic place in a fantastic time. Absolutely. Um, I remember years ago hearing people talking about they traveled to the States and they'd see some town, maybe Chicago or something. Yeah. And say, you should see all the art, you know, and then <laughs> all the, there's public art everywhere and you should see the murals and all this yeah. and they show pictures. Even for non-artists, it's exciting when you, when you come across it, when yeah. you're planning on it. But sorry, continue. And, mm-hmm. uh, and they're almost, um, it's, it's a part of that city's identity, mm-hmm. you know? And I've always thought, wouldn't that be amazing if Waterloo the region was, you know, known and more for that. The region's um, what really attracted me to stay here because I was considering um, moving to Toronto pretty seriously because I was told, like, to make it as an artist, you need to be in Toronto. Um, and just the classic things like, you know, Waterloo is a very tech dominated city, right. no room for creatives here. Well, Shopify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. So yeah. like tech companies have been like my biggest clients, mm-hmm. you know, and they very much support the arts and want a place for it. So what I really like about KW is how much it's changing and growing. Yeah. And, um, it's amazing to see all these new murals come up and to be like, contribute to that change is like super exciting um because you know like there are cities like i went to montreal just to go look at the murals and it's insane like there there's murals everywhere you, where you think like that a mural should go there there's already a mural there um but like you're seeing more of that in kitchener and it's cool to like be there from the start when there wasn't a lot of art and to see just like new pieces popping up everywhere yeah, you're something part of history <laughs> no you are this is where it's going yeah. sorry marshall yeah something's blown me away in the last 10 years is those three huge kinetic wind sculptures on the boardwalk by mm-hmm. artist ron baird and if someone had ever said to me that three of the most incredible prominent you know um permanent art installations would be on a million square foot shopping yeah <laughs> outdoor yeah. shopping center that's true i was so excited when those went out i couldn't believe it and and they're incredible and some i never imagined it i never associated you know um uh the idea that that space could have public art in it Mm -hmm. not just any public art it's i think three incredible pieces Mm -hmm. in town that um amongst all this concrete and right (laughs) outdoor mall like architecture (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, for sure. Sarah's right. You're contributing something incredible. Oh, too. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's part of our history now. And um, like I said, what I find so exciting, like you said, you're excited. I'm going to start backtrack here. It's part of history now. And like you said, you're excited to be part of it. And, mm-hmm. it's, a, and it's a fun time to be involved in this process. But it's so exciting for us as viewers of this art, driving through our town and actually seeing some cool stuff. Um, I asked Steph Butari this question. Do you have any dream walls in town? Do you drive by <laughs> anything where you're like, that's my wall. Um, I need it. <laughs> there's, I'm constantly seeing like, um, what I really liked about the mural, uh, kind of culture in Montreal is like every kind of storefront mm-hmm. and like corner. And like, I really like turning a corner and just happening on mm-hmm. like a huge mural on the side of a building. I would love to see some big, big stuff. I think in my head, it's just like, it's continuing like from the canvas to the mural. It's just getting bigger. It has to be yeah. bigger kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I like the idea of it being on things like, um, like a dairy, one side of a dairy queen, right? Yeah. It'd be funny mm-hmm. to see one on like the side of love shop on Victoria street, like just something that <laughs> is not attractive generally, or mm-hmm. just so banal. Right. right. Um, I don't know if I have any dream walls. Now that I, that's a good question. You're going to now that I said it. Yeah. You're be driving around going, I well, want that wall. I constantly see, like, um, I've been seeing kind of a trend around um, the downtown core. I live right downtown Kitchener. Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing a trend of, like, um, a building, like, it was, it's actually a love shop in my, like, yeah. parking lot. They, it was, like, I, I'm pretty sure it's a historic building, but they painted over oh, yeah. the brick. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's yeah. right beside Trillium West. Yep. Yeah, and they painted over with gray. I always liked the gray of the Trillium West, and I was like, this is, like, the perfect canvas. Um, but I also, you know, I kind of like the balance of like the old brick Mm -hmm. and like the painted over brick and the new buildings. Um, so I do, I do like the idea of keeping some walls 
untouched, like in key, like if they're historic buildings, mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, but any sort of like painted brick buildings, I'm like, this is the perfect canvas. <laughs> like that Trillium West wall yeah. would be perfect to put some line work on. You should contact them. I should, I should, now that I'm talking about it so much. <laughs> I think as the city grows, there are things that make us feel not connected to our community. Mm-hmm. And then there are murals that help us feel more connected and they have relationships with each other as well Mm -hmm. you know there's so many things being built that um so although practical i appreciate costco going up in this neighborhood Mm -hmm. um nothing about it aesthetically or Mm -hmm. culturally does anything for me whatsoever yeah um but as that continues on and that will continue on i think it's so important and vital that things like more murals are created and public Mm -hmm. art and just to sort of have that grasp or or clinging for um, for that idea that, hey, we're still here and we still make art. Yeah. I want to share it with you. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to see it? <laughs> Do you know? Just that call yeah. for help of that, of wanting to share those ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Kitchener was super good for murals this summer. Mm-hmm. A ton of new stuff from all like predominantly female artists got put up this summer, mm-hmm. which was really cool to see as well. Um like uh, Stephanie Scott's piece right across from the LCBO. Have you seen it? Like oh, the, yeah. the plant one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Nicole Benno's uh, road mural right in front of the market too. Yeah, it was, was just, lovely. yeah, mm-hmm. I had, I, I was getting tagged in things cause I had friends being like, look at these like, like three new murals. Like they were, would post mine. Cause my, the one across from city hall, I did only the middle piece mm-hmm. um, yes. yeah. back in December of last year. And then just this summer I continued, I like, finished it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that happened, and then with these other murals, people were like, it, you can kind of go on like a mural walk now, which is really oh, cool. Oh, you totally can. Yeah. Yeah. And just like snap pictures, and like a lot of the times you, people know the artists too, which is also really cool. And if they don't, they're easily found. That's yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're talking about like the scale of your work growing, right? Mm-hmm. From these tiny sketches and, uh, and experimental work, and then turning into uh, larger pieces and people's homes and then mural sized mm-hmm. works what do you feel is next like what are you excited to get into so this is kind of ironic because I was talking about scaling up but mm-hmm. um starting uh January I have a lot of places that are going to be exhibiting my canvas work oh wonderful yeah so I I like I very much have neglected my canvas work since starting mm-hmm. murals um winter has to just like with photographers winter has to be a good time to to work on those movable pieces mm -hmm. right yeah Yeah. and I can essentially I'm kind of preparing to do a second isolation period almost great because I um I've been doing a lot of murals especially with murals you can't play around too much I find especially when um I found after I did a my first black line work on a white wall piece a lot of people wanted the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I found myself doing that similar mural with different portraits, but similar color palette and whatnot. Um, And I wanted to, I miss like experimenting. And I constantly say that like, I haven't actually found my style yet. I've just been like building the foundation. That's so funny for you to say, right? Because we were like, well, this is the Trisha Abe style. Right, right. And it's like, it's definitely- Did you get yourselves a Trisha Abe? You know? (laughs) It's definitely consistent, Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I've just been building a foundation and I have so many ideas of what I like next step. Like I I love to hear that. Yeah. Who knows what you have yet to offer and maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe it'll be color like Marshall was asking about. Maybe it'll be a different form. Right. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you make. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking to kind of uh, go back to canvas a little bit because Mm -hmm. that's what allows me to experiment the most. Um, And I like the idea of creating sets and series of pieces that kind of flow and have Mm -hmm. like maybe similar color palettes but they're like a collection kind of thing I really miss doing that and a series of maybe same size canvases or different and the story they tell together yeah right Mm -hmm. I I really like the idea I was doing a bit of that with like um some of my old canvas work I would do like a pair like one would be black line work on a white background and the other would be like the inverse and it would be like a complementary pair yeah um, so I want to do more work like that, even with tattooing, like I, I like sets, like on my wrists, I have mm-hmm. like two different portraits, but they're complementary set mm-hmm. kind of thing. Right. So you can do a lot of that with canvas and, um, yeah. How, how much are you thinking about, um, gender and age and ethnicity in the figures that you're drawing? Is that something you're, a lot uh, of the requests for my murals, it's like, 
I've been lucky to get a lot of creative freedom with the murals, but one of the biggest things is people come to me because they like the diversity that's expressed in the crowds of portraits that I do. Um, And again, it's, you know, it's just lines, but you can capture a lot of different, like even ethnicities with those lines. Oh yeah. Yeah. And hair for sure. Mm -hmm. Different textures of hair, different like bone structures. Like it's, you can really, yeah, I make sure to include with my murals. It's, you know, it's, very even male, female, all different ethnicities can be captured in there too. Yeah. I, I really do. Um, if, if, if I do like kind of calculate anything, it's definitely that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think people don't, a lot of people don't notice until somebody notices something that's not diverse. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been writing a blog for the St. Jacob's farmer's market. Okay. They send me off to a farm every so yeah, often. I'm kind of jealous of this town. I'm, this job. I'm, I'm off to Palmerston tomorrow to spend the day. day oh, at fun! Al- alpaca farm. Oh, fun! Anyways, I I, I wrote. I, wrote, I want to go. Yeah, I, I wrote a bunch of them, and I kind of pointed out to the people who hired me. I said, "So this is all like middle-aged white men that I'm writing about. Is there some kind of?" And they never gave any thought to it. They're like, "Oh, so anyways." Yes, right. but that seems to, that's the farming demographic. Yeah, that's in our the farming area. demographic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. Anyways, but with regards to your mural, I wasn't sure if um, when you get commissioned, if someone says, "Some try to really make this very multicultural and right." Yeah. People don't people don't typically say like, "My my work has already been pretty mm-hmm. diverse," so yeah. they were like, "We want that." No one's ever just like, "Yeah, yeah. make it less diverse," kind of thing. You <laughs> Could know, you whitewash this a little. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So people come and come to me for that because I've already like most of my work is is pretty diverse. I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you referencing when you uh, for the people in your work? Are you working on photographs and like a collage of stuff that you kind of cut and paste together for us and think? Yeah. I think just because you're there's a lot happening with regards to relationships between the people, mm-hmm. even if they're not looking at each other and touching and stuff. There's still so much happening. Um, there must be so much planning. Right. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, I kind of treat it like a puzzle. Like I always start with one portrait and then it's like, what would look good beside this? And then you kind of piece things together until you get a big crowd of people and I'm constantly moving and rearranging people, people, but they're like all individual pieces. Um, but yeah, I do, I do reference like, so I, I feel like I've had this conversation with someone before, but, um, about inspiration Mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm more inspired by photography than other artists, which is interesting because I'm like an artist myself. I think it's probably the lines, like Mm -hmm. you're saying, like it's, it's capturing that, um, those simple lines then. Mm -hmm. So are you like searching images up? Are you flipping through photo books? What are you doing? Right. So I'll, I'll get reference photos from online. Um, and I end up changing a lot of the features to make them into essentially make believe people Mm -hmm. i don't typically like um oh like copying a face directly right yeah right Mm -hmm. so i like i'll i'll find um a picture for a certain body position but then i'll like change the lips or the cheekbones or the hair Mm -hmm. line even um because i want them to be imaginary people um and it's always funny because i i'll do murals and people who are working if it's a company will be like oh is that me and i'm like (laughs) Sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want it to be you? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Um, but I like keeping it kind of vague mm-hmm. um, so it can, you know, anyone can identify with it. It seems like it's for, somewhat forgiving too in your approach. In the, so with Sarah's photography, mm-hmm. um, Sarah instinctively knows not to like cut everybody off at the ankles in the photo right. or cut a, a wrist off or of course a head, right? Yeah. But it sounds like as you, uh, like you, you use the word puzzle, Yeah. Um, you can piece something together and if an arm isn't quite connecting very nicely with the next figure yes you can make an adjustment because it's not real right right Mm -hmm. and make actually a stronger even better composition because you can make those adjustments right and you can put you can add new lines you could take lines out um i think there is kind of a like an easy line to go like a line to cross where it becomes too busy Mm -hmm. uh, and I always want to avoid doing that. Do you Um, ever go back and edit yourself or do you try not to like to get less busy or do you find um, it's coming out clean? Like in my sketches? Yeah. Um, I think I do more of like the edit as you go approach. Mm -hmm. Um, In the end, like if, if something doesn't belong there, then, you know, like it's just kind of like a spatial thing. Um, If one side is very crowded with lines, I'll either add more or take some out. And see, you know what, this is a, what you're talking about earlier, saying that you don't have a classic 
um, education and art. <laughs> you're already talking about balancing your composition, right? Maybe not even knowing what you're doing. I, yeah, just, it's coming naturally to you. I think that's beautiful. Oh, thank yeah, you. Like, yeah, like you went into this without the formal kind of training with, teaches you about um, how odd numbers work better than mm -hmm. um, even numbers. Yeah, and triangles and geometry and just. I remember in university we had to spend an entire three hours studying a Ken Danby painting, mm -hmm. and just to show how like. We counted all the little negative spaces and everything. It's a perfect composition. Yeah. And um, but you just instinctively knew how to do that because mm -hmm. all your pieces are uh, perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah they're lovely. I think it's also practice. I've just been doing it a lot, and I I found so um with the city. I think the city hall piece is a good example mm -hmm. of this. But um, from December of last year to this summer, uh, my child, my my style kind of changed a little bit where. I, I've started doing more like large scale people mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So um, the center of that mural is like full portraits of people from maybe like, you know, um, it'll include their shoulders, yeah, mid right, torso. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now you're you're sort of zoomed zooming in, in. on a larger scale. Yeah. Yeah. That is a change. Yeah. I and really I notice. I prefer that. That's why. So it was hard to finish that piece because I started it kind of with one style even though it's all the same style but um the the ends of it the people are much bigger and I think it's more like intimate in a way um because you can they seem to have more of a presence I feel when like it's a it's a much bigger portrait mm -hmm. um and it's more fun to it adds kind of depth to it too so the middle section of that mural I always whenever I pass by it because I live downtown and I always pass by and I'm like I wish I could do that middle section again mm -hmm. but um, that's like the artist sketchbook. It's right. part of your, your body of work. Right? right. And it's kind of nice to see like there's, there's progression in mm -hmm. that one piece alone from like a few months difference. Right. But, um, yeah, uh, I think blowing up some of the, the portraits kind of adds a bit more depth to it, which I really like because some portraits can be kind of closer to you some further. Um, so it's kind of a yeah, little I, bit of I, a different yeah, plane. A bit more depth there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we wind up our chat. Yeah. Um, we want to know about where all we can see Patricia's work, but I, I also wanted to uh, say how excited I am to see where you're going with this. Yeah. Oh, a, I'm always in too. awe of people your age who have it all together like this at such an early age. So courageous. Oh, like, thank you. I don't, I, I by no means have it all together. Still, still accidents, but um, <laughs> yeah, just take it though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hadn't even started my career mm -mm. And yet at your age. So. No. Um, I would love for you to come back and talk to us once you've, gotten through that next period of exploration mm. and yes. and start creating new work and we'd love to talk to you absolutely i can i can probably give you a date for when there's a deadline right. yeah <laughs> there's, a, there's a deadline for all of this this time um, okay so where can everybody find you um so just like social media yeah. and stuff so um post i post most frequently on instagram at trisha abe t-r-i-s-h-a-a-b-e i have a website trishaabe.com the, the piece right across from city hall is one of the public ones i did the window display at the museum as well um just down from that piece oh yeah i did yeah. see that it's yeah too yeah. yeah you have a new piece in uptown waterloo yeah, yeah. um closest intersection is uh Willis Way in Regina. Well, I um, challenge people to go find it and take pictures of it and take Trisha. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, anywhere else? My other stuff is mostly in um, inside tech mm -hmm. companies. Um, but uh, for the stuff starting January, I'm gonna. I'm really excited. I'm gonna have my pieces in Jane Bond um, for four months. That's so wonderful. so I get mm -hmm. to cover the entire restaurant with my work, which I've been wanting to do for like two years now. <laughs> Fun fact for, for people closer to my age, Jane Bond was once called Acid Sweetness. Really? Many moons ago. <laughs> many moons ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can have an art exhibition opening with all your friends coming out. And, yeah. And yeah. Mar I'll definitely come see that. Marbled cheese and crackers. And mm -hmm. Right. I plan So I plan on doing that after actually the four months at Jane Bond in March. I'm getting the paint by Munsey space for a oh, two yeah. day reception. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be like my first ever, like it's going to feel like my real first solo <laughs> exhibit, which I'm really excited about. And I kind of like how tiny that space is. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Uh, it's going to remind me of my it's old apartment. Like <laughs> your old apartment. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, dude you're crushing it keep it up seriously yeah. and I, I really hope that once you get into that next uh that next stage that you come back and talk to us for sure absolutely yeah i'd love thanks. to thanks thank, thank you, you. Thanks.
Thanks for meeting us in Bond Park. Please like, rate, and subscribe to our podcast on the platform that you're listening to. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bond Park Podcast. Original music by Alan Lung.